There we go. All right. This is the Northwest Edmonton show with Trevor Abusifi for Facebook and YouTube. And we have a very special guest today, Mr. Steve Weston, who is running for city council in the Nakota Iska ward. How are you doing today, Steve? I'm fantastic, Trevor. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining me. I really appreciate having you on the show. We're taking a little bit of a break from shows the last couple of weeks here because I have been super busy with my family and work but uh, i'm glad to be back into the swing of things we've got a couple more interviews coming up later this week that we're going to get online uh, but uh, steve you are getting me back in the saddle so thank you for coming today and even you and i had to reschedule this call a couple of times because man my my weeks have just been nuts it's coming into spring it's construction seasons in the full full on go on tilt here so uh, glad to have you um, for those people who are just tuning in now who want to see the show we've been interviewing lots of folks and especially those who are running for city council in the wards in the northwest of Edmonton so we call that north of the Yellowhead west of 97th street those are the three wards of Nakota Iska, Anilnuk and Tastawinuak so uh, the last show we did was Councillor Knack was on, and Steve is his only current opponent running in the Nakota East Award. So uh, that is what is going on here. I've got a couple of questions that I ask everybody. Steve's going to get the same questions, but we're going to have a conversation about it and find out a little bit more about Steve Weston. So if everybody's ready to go, uh, we'll just jump right in. How about you start us off, Steve, with just uh, giving us a quick biography of yourself. Tell us where you came from and how you got here. Well, I was born in the West End at the Misericordia Hospital. I uh, grew up in the Medlark area and then moved to La Pearl later on. Pretty much spent my teen years here. I uh, lived in Mill Woods for a little bit and then moved back here. And yeah, I, I love it here. Great place to live. So you live in the Meadow Lark area now? No, I, I live in La Pearl. Oh. Yeah, I, okay. yeah. when I was a kid, I, I grew up in Meadow Lark and then moved to La Pearl as a teen, moved away, and then bought a place here about six years ago. Oh, okay. Awesome. All right. So most of uh, the ward you're running in is actually outside of my audience area, but... Um, you, you and I had had a little bit of a chat before doing this, and you said you were up knocking on doors and talking to people in Starling and Trumpeter and, uh, and that kind of area. So those people are definitely part of the ward is, but I don't think, I'm not sure even where La Pearl is. What part, like, give me a rough Sorry. idea there. I'm not, I don't know the West End Metal Arc area Sorry. very well. It's close to West End and Tamal, kind of, you know where the Canadian Tire is in the West End? Oh yeah, like a ninety fifth Avenue, is that Canadian oh, Tire? Ninety eighth ish. Yeah, I, I live just west of there. Oh, okay, all right, cool. I painted a condo there not too long ago, so yeah, I kind of, I, I I got a good idea where you where you're talking now. So, uh, okay, let's uh, jump right into the questions here. Since you're running for city council, and I'm sure everybody's watching with this is curious about that. Uh, what specific campaign issues are the most important to you personally in this election? I think at the top of the list is the the fight to get the homeless help. Uh, that's it seems like it's an ongoing battle, and it's 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 kind of close to home where. It, it can happen to anyone, right? Like it, it can happen to your brother, your sister, your mom, your cousin, whoever, right? It's one of those things that just happens. And yeah, I, I see them on the street and it breaks my heart. And yeah, I, I just want to help. Yeah, we uh, we definitely have a growing problem with uh, homelessness in this city. That's for sure. Well, yeah, I think with the pandemic too, it, it's only going to get worse. So I think we we need to get it under control mm, for sure for sure and do you have uh, anything specific in, around actions around homeless uh, helping the homeless that you want to talk about well, yeah I, I think it goes it, it starts with treating why they're homeless right it, it, whether it's addiction or mental illness that sort of thing get that figured out first before putting them into a home right 
Mm -hmm. you put 400 people with mental illness and addiction into a home without treating it, it just ends up with chaos, right? Yeah, that's, uh, I, I agree with you on that. There, there's a certain tragedy that we have with, like, it's a noble thing to want to shelter people and give them a place to live and keep them safe. But without, you know, addressing the underlying issue of why a person is homeless, you're, you're not doing anything to solve the problem, right? I've, that's something I've talked about with a lot of people. And you do need to, you do need to address the issues that cause that person to become homeless, especially if they're chronically homeless, right? You know, some people get down on their luck, uh, they lose their house, they get evicted or whatever. And it's a temporary situation. But other people, you know, they're out on the street for years, years and years, right? So we have to talk about that. I agree. No, that, that's probably biggest on the list. It's or highest on the list. Highest on the list. Any other uh, important issues to you? Um, I'm all for helping the seniors. I think, you know, anyone over 60 has paid their dues and deserves some some help, some recognition. Yeah, I just like to help. All right. Cool. All right. Well, let's. Uh, we got homelessness and seniors help and. Uh, the, the, right. Definitely the, the roads. The, the roads. Like the driving in general, yeah. I, I'm a truck driver for a living, so I see a lot of what goes on, and I have ideas, you know, suggestions, things like that. I oh, know I do a lot of driving around too. There's a lot of intersections in the city that could be fixed. <laughs> um, yeah, no, you're. Um, I'm trying to remember what was on your your website. You were saying you you had a. I was telling you the other day, I, li I like your website. It has a really clear layout of all the things you're, you're concerned on. Um, I'm just blanking on what the topics you cover on the website are at the moment. So, Oh, they, uh, the blogs or just the, my platform in general? Just your platform. Well, I guess, I guess I asked you what was most important, but I guess, you know, you could use this opportunity to tell us a little bit about your platform too, if you like. Well, the road safety stuff, you know, like just as simple things that people forget or don't know, you know, like signaling before braking, you know, turning your lights on, you know, things that a lot of us think are simple, but I see it every day. And, you know, maybe, you know, public service announcements or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. there, there, there's a lot of things we can do to make the road safer. And I, I think one of them is getting vehicles off the road. And, uh, yeah, the, the, the local ET, you know, the latest ETS changes are doing the opposite of that. So uh, I've always had this uh, fantasy where every driver has a little laser gun and you have like a, a tag on your car and you can shoot the gun and send a report to somebody about their bad driving habits. Like <laughs> if you see them perfect. breaking before they signal, you could just zap and be like, that guy that right there. And then I don't know if anything would ever happen to it. I just, I want this ultimate cosmic control of being able to instantly report people that they're not doing anything illegal. They're just doing something kind of yeah. silly or absentmindedly. Just maybe a little LED pops up on their, on their dash that says, pay more attention to what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that they just, they might not know, right? Like, yeah. Um, you know, that's true. Uh, okay, let's go on to uh, the next question. This is one of my favorite questions uh, because I'm all about hearing people's um, diverse opinions and positions on things. So given the diversity of opinions in uh, Nakota Iska Ward, uh, how do you intend to address inevitable problems of having personal or ideological differences with the voters that you intend to represent? Um, just, just communication listening to them right mm -hmm. uh, it, it, there's always an explanation why they feel the way they feel right and if they don't agree that not everyone's going to agree with me I, I know that already i've come across that already with things like defunding the police and you know, widening winterburn road and things like that where i've had people say their opinions on those things and yeah it's, you have a conversation and that's kind of it really it's I, I want to listen to everyone, right? And if if 
you know, hundred people want something and there's two people that don't, right? It's mm -hmm. people that don't are probably going to have to see it the other way. It's usually the two people that are the noisiest though, don't you find? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's a, I, I think there's always uh, the problem, especially if you live on social media, you get the noisiest, loudest people who are actually not part of the silent majority and those people's opinions tend to be amplified because they talk the most because they're the most outraged because they have the the craziest concern that is probably you know has no basis in fact but you know like they believe some crazy conspiracy theory oh, yeah. uh, and they're going to yell about it because they're so concerned that you know i there's pedophiles in the basement of a pizza parlor or something i don't you know so <laughs> well no and, then, and that's why knocking on doors is so important right the, you can't hide behind a, a screen with a fake avatar or whatever you're talking to someone face to face right and then yeah. they're telling you their issues so yeah yeah i i I'm not a huge fan of social media but i understand why it's necessary for this well it's been uh yeah i i tend to agree with you i put a lot of stuff on social media but that's just because i'm trying to do something with you know improving the community and giving people information and building up the our corner of northwest edmonton so i try to do that but you know a while back i turned off all the notifications on my phone and i just don't uh i don't go deep into the weeds anymore it's too frustrating for a person's mental state to spend a lot of time in that constant mill of people's crazy ideas and outrage and it's like it's not good for a person's mental state as far as i'm concerned let's just get I, I like having conversations like this where we're actually talking to each other instead of just firing text back and forth right at the very least it's not as good as standing in front of somebody's door and talking to them about what issues they're having so if you're out door knocking and talking to people that's even better right yeah, well, it, it's hard for me to not go on social media and just crack jokes, <laughs> but <laughs> that, that probably, it probably wouldn't be good for the campaign. It's hard for people to know if you're being serious, right? Oh, exactly. So I, I got to be serious, Steve. Serious, okay. I, I, I get in trouble for that all the time. I, when I do go on, I'll say some like ridiculous thing that's meant to be a joke and I'll get back. You can't possibly be serious. And I'm like, no, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay uh good so you're going to be out knocking on people's doors listening to gauging the uh people's reactions and what they need and taking everybody's opinions into account um let's go to the next question the next question is what's the reason or reasons you decided to seek public office well it goes back to helping people i, I reached a point where i yeah, I wanted to help out. I wanted to find something to volunteer for, that that sort of thing, like or just find a cause, right? And then I, I read about the changes in the election, and and yeah, I, like this is perfect, right? I, I can, I can help everyone if I was to win. What What do you mean by changes in the election? What uh, What is it that sort of tipped you off there? Just how you can campaign from what what was it January until. October mm -hmm. instead of just the couple months or whatever it was before. So. Oh, okay. So that was motivation for you to try to get into the, into the, uh, the race early. Well, it, it just got me thinking like, uh, I, you know, I, I wasn't thinking about the election in October at all. And then I started reading about it and, you know, that's the way I can help the homeless. I can help seniors. I can help, you know, anyone everyone who, whoever asks all, all the communities uh, the people that i'm talking to that want things done in their community i, I can i can help good okay so i mean i guess the, what uh, if i could just reiterate that to make sure i'm hearing what you're saying is you're saying that it was that desire for change and to see progress and things that really motivated you to to go into to run for council and hopefully be that that person that does the uh that gets the things done is that what 
You're saying? Well, did, I, I did like at first I wanted to help. And then once I started talking to people and people were reaching out to me about change and how they wanted to see change, then yeah, it's, it's more and more motivation every day. Okay. Every, every day I campaign, I, yeah, I want to win more. Okay. Well, what kind of things are people asking you to change? Um, to just to, to, to stop the, uh, the, the big projects, right? They, they don't want to see an LRT. They, they want to see their sidewalks fixed. They, they, there's some communities that don't have side. You, you get outside of Westview Village and there's no sidewalk going anywhere, mm -hmm. right? But yeah, we're going to build an $8 million bridge to the, to the West Edmonton Mall. Like, Isn't it, West Edmonton Mall supposed to be paying for that? Yeah, they're paying for I think two million or something like that. It's but either way, yeah, you know what I mean. It's that whole thing. Let this is something that's been rubbing me the wrong way actually since you brought it up. My understanding was is that the lease or the the original agreement that um, West Edmonton Mall signed with the city said that they were responsible for maintaining that walking bridge. For per, in perpetuity and then it became dis uh it, it fell into disrepair and it had to come down and nobody held west edmonton mall to account to fix that bridge and now they're just saying well, oh, well we'll put two million dollars towards the eight million or whatever i don't know what the number is you probably know you live right there you probably yeah. know a lot more about it than i do but the way I understood it, maybe you can, maybe if you know something about this, you can correct me. But the way I understood it was that the the mall was supposed to maintain it forever, and in, since it it was falling down, shouldn't the mall replace it? They should. Am I, get, am I, I understand this right? In any way you look at it, eight million dollars seems like an awful lot for a footbridge, doesn't it? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> th th there's money that could go elsewhere. I'm sure I could build them a wooden one for considerably, exactly. considerably less than $8 million. I don't know. Wood's pretty expensive nowadays. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's my specialty, though, is I built, at my place, I built a 56-foot-long deck down the side of my house to because it was easier for me to build a deck than to pour concrete. So I've got this giant thing that looks somewhat like a boat dock. I could do the same kind of thing right over 170th Avenue or 170th yeah. Street. So yeah. Yeah. if you're I mean, on I'm council, not... you, we, you can call me and I'll, I'll come be the, the consultant on getting the bridge done for like way, way less than 8 million bucks. <laughs> That's what we need is more consultants. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if that's if you've ever worked with the city, you know that you know what a joke that is too, right? <laughs> I, I haven't, but uh, I'm well aware. Oh yeah, I've I've done uh, not directly for the city, but as a subcontractor to people who are contracted to the city, and the meetings you have to sit through, and the consultants, and it, to make every little decision, it has to go through this meeting to that manager and then the construction company figures out what they want to do they take a recommendation back to the engineer and the consulting company and then they have to have a meeting with the project managers at the city and it's like we just want to fix we want to fix this problem here that'll take 10 minutes we don't need a month's worth of consulting to figure out how to fix a, a 10 minute problem we just need to give us a thumbs up <laughs> exactly yeah all right, so maybe I maybe we won't add to the consulting problem. Yeah. Um, where do we go from there? We got okay. Uh, what do you most want people to know about you as a candidate, and why should they vote for you? Well, um, I'm hardworking, honest. Um, I'm not a politician. I'm a, I'm a blue collar guy. Right? I'm gonna tell you straight how it is I'm, I'm not gonna give you a song and dance and whatever else if if if, if i think it's a bad idea i'll tell you it's a bad idea okay right? and uh, i want to help i want to help the communities more than anything right mm -hmm. that, that's probably the biggest thing is yeah I, i'm not looking to find little projects to put my name on i, I want to i want to build sidewalks and fix roads that sort of thing 
sounds like you, you keep coming back to this theme of getting things done as opposed to just, you know, saying you're getting things done. You like, you seem like you really want to help and build things and get stuff done. Is that? Well, that seems like the change that people want. Right? Yeah, it's fair. Fair point. I well, think, least, uh, the, the people I've talked to, at least. I agree. I think that often things don't get, don't get, get done like they should get done. Especially on, mind you, it's it's hard running a city of a million people. It's not like you know fixing your backyard, um, which is what I've been doing the last couple of weekends. But you know, no, it's I, easy I, I when you work it. by yourself, right? Like you, I mean, you're a blue collar guy. I'm a blue collar guy. It's easy when you're the guy on the tool that just uh, picks up a hammer and or gets in the driver's seat and you just drive where you need to go and get your work done. So I have a little bit of sympathy for council that they got a lot of tubes to jump through, but you're right. It does seem like, especially on the really, when it's your backyard and it's your neighborhood and it's your sidewalk. I mean, I'm sure it's not an easy job, but it's, you know, it's it's something I'll figure out and get good at. We've all got uh, my friends and I, because our neighborhoods are, uh, my neighborhood went through renewal a couple of years ago. So the roads are in really good condition, you know, right in front of my house, but the feeder roads in are, you know, pothole city. And uh, my, our back alleys are just full of potholes. And we keep hearing about alley renewal as possibly one of those things that city council is going to do. And it just keeps getting. Wait, wait, we've been hearing, about, hearing about that here for, I think, eight years. Something like yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah, my friend uh, who lives uh, a few blocks away from me here, he's got, it's like doing a slalom in his back you know, alley. To what, one of the potholes is turned into like a sinkhole. It's now like four feet wide and it's about a foot deep. And when after it rains, it fills with water. So if you don't know it's there, you end up driving through this thing and ripping the, almost ripping the axles off your car. <laughs> yeah, there's actually a contest for Edmonton's worst road that you can. Well, it's in his, picture, I would submit it, but it's in his alley, right? I don't know if that would qualify. Yeah, I guess. I, I believe <laughs> alleys are part of it. Are they? Okay, all right. Well, we'll get on that. I'll go over there and take some pictures and put them in the worst because it's got to be close. It is a nasty pothole. And he's called 311 a couple of times. And I'm like, you need to start writing letters or something to get this fixed. And his neighbor keeps going out there and throwing dirt in it to try to fill it up. But. <laughs> There we go. I think that makes it worse. Uh, <laughs> it didn't turn it into a pool. Right. Yeah. We'll invite the kids over. <laughs> All the neighborhood kids can come have a swim. Um, okay, Steve. Uh, so we had talked, you you watched the video, obviously, with uh, the interview I did with Andrew. And um, since you're the only person running against him, currently uh tell us a bit about what differentiates you from councillor knack well i am not a career politician i'm I'm not looking to better my political agenda i'm I'm not that yeah i'm a blue collar guy that's seen enough and i i want to be the change that i'm looking for right and then that being said that i'm not a politician is when you ask me a simple question, I'm not going to give you a 10 minute response and not answer your question, right? That's a, a lot of the, the, the politician talk, the, the politician way, that, that's not me. And uh, yeah, I think, I think defunding the police is a, is a big one. I, I read that that's something Andrew's looking to do. And yeah, I'm, I, I, I think that's a horrible idea. I happen yeah. to agree with you. It is a popular uh, slogan these days though. Yeah, well, if something gets big on Twitter, a hashtag or whatever, I mean, we can't run our city by Twitter, right? True, yeah. So, yeah, I think, I, I, I'm, I'm sure he's got the best interest or, the, you know, says he does or whatever, but yeah. The best interest of the community, you mean? Uh, someone. Someone. <laughs> All right. We'll say no more. <laughs> All right. Uh, and anything else you want to talk about while we have you 
have your voice. I mean, if you want to scream something to the audience, let them know something. Now's the now's your opportunity. Probably not. I did. This is my first interview on Zoom, so it's it's one of those where I'll probably shout. You know, do that in the ninth or tenth, maybe. Okay. The, the first the first one, uh, I'll take it easy. Okay. Well, we're uh, we're glad we can give you a little bit of a little bit of your training wheels here. My shit. My panel's not. What's that? I, I forgot to bring a glass of water, so it's one of those. Oh, <laughs> my mouth's pretty dry. There's no yelling, no screaming. <laughs> All right. Well, my channel's not that big, so you don't need to worry about uh, embarrassing yourself because it's your first time. You can you can now go into your next interview with the uh, training wheels off. Well, there's a game seven on right now that I was actually watching. Oh, and the, the Montreal Toronto. Oh, okay. See, that's why I didn't know about it. Because it... <laughs> well, it's one of game sevens are always fun. So. Yeah, yeah. I kind of stopped watching hockey when the Oilers just stopped playing. So that that freed up a lot of my time. I yeah, I plan on watching hockey every second day, and yeah, that, that's not happening now. More all the more time to go out there and knock on people's doors, then, right? Yeah, I, I, I took a little break, but I I figure next weekend I'm going to be back at it. Awesome. All right. Well. Hopefully the people of Nakota Iska are going to see us stepping on their doors. And uh, if they look at, if you look out your peephole and you see this guy with the glasses, make sure you answer the door. It, it, it's not the other bald guy with glasses. You want to vote for it. It's this oh, one. yes. Oh, that's right. You guys are both you bald guys with glasses. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually had someone that they're like, aren't you the current guy? I'm like, no, 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 that's not me. <laughs> Awesome. So what's the, uh, if people are interested and want to get a hold of you and chat some more and uh, share their opinion with you, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, through my website, www.steveweston.org. That's our, I'm on Facebook, Steve Weston business page, uh, Steve Weston 780 on Twitter. Awesome. I, 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 just, I, I just joined TikTok as well. That, that's, it's, I, I don't plan on doing any dancing or singing or whatever it's on there. But, shanties. Uh, I, I'm, I'm on there. Right? Okay. <laughs> but wait, we'll, we'll see how that goes. And it, maybe the stand-up routine will come out. Who knows? Well, you know, who knows? You might just get addicted to it. Next thing you know, you'll be doing musical duets with people and yeah. viral dance videos. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Probably, probably not. I'm just repeating things that I heard about TikTok, actually. So I don't. <laughs> I'm yeah, I was probably, told that's how I get the young viewers or the, the young voters. So. I think I'm about 20 years too old to use TikTok. So <laughs> I, I, I probably am too. So. <laughs> All right. Well, Steve, we're going to link. Uh, if it's Facebook, it's up here. If it's YouTube, it's down here. Uh, we're going to link all your contact info and your social media accounts into the video. So when people see this, hopefully uh, they'll be able to go in and click below or click above and find the information. And it'll all be there for everybody to, uh, to get to. And if you're watching this, I'll ask you to like and subscribe to whatever channel or media you're watching this on uh the more subscribers we get the more that motivates me to get new content and to give it out to the people so if you found this video interesting if you support steve please share the video and uh i guess that's about it anything else you want to add before we sign off here steve no i think i'm all right i'm just glad you didn't ask me questions about properties and evaluating properties and that sort of oh thing. yeah that's uh, <laughs> i you know I, I was doing a thing with um odor remediation and a friend of mine's a property appraiser and i was trying to get him to answer questions about how uh odors affect property uh values and i accidentally copied that interview those interview questions uh for another presentation i was working on for some real estate folks um yeah i accidentally copied those e those questions <laughs> yeah, you, you had me worried that you, you changed the questions on me and uh, i'm like yeah, mac didn't get those <laughs> <laughs> no i definitely 
didn't ask him about property appraisals. That's for sure. No, it didn't. Did, nice chatting with you, Trevor. Yeah, nice to, you know, it's funny, uh, I mentioned you in one of my videos um, months ago now. Uh, I remember uh, you you had just officially filed, so your name had showed up on the, on the city website for candidates. Okay. But they hadn't yet linked any of your contact info to it. So I couldn't find you at all. I was like, Steve Weston's missing. <laughs> but then we found you and uh, I, I looked at your website and we, I think we did a, a little, a little bio later, a couple of weeks later to, to share some people and some information. So if anybody else wants to go look at that video, it's back in the archive somewhere. And it was nice to finally meet you after uh, sort of meet you on zoom over whatever here uh, instead of you know just emails back and forth about things so thanks for coming on steve we really appreciate it thanks for having me all right i'm gonna turn off the recording now